we have a couple of new motor developments and uh, some changes to existing motors that happened a while ago that I haven't really explained to anybody. Um, and I think most of you are probably here to see the split shifted magnets and learn what they are about. And I'll go over that in a minute, but uh, this is actually one of our new motors. It's a 2809 motor. And um, another new motor that we have is the 22.6 millimeter motor. This stator is based on the WASP motor, the WASP motor stator from RCN Power, but this is a 22.6 by 7.2 millimeter stator. This is a really, really, really nice size in the, uh, what is it, I think 1920, yeah, 1920 KB. The, the, the numbers on this motor are very nice. It just it really performs super nice. And it is another five inch motor and it does contrast with the 25 millimeter motor, which I'll get to in a minute. But first let me explain why we sell the stator separate from the actual bells of this 22.6 millimeter motor. And these are the bell colors. This hot pink color does not translate well over video or over pictures. It is super bright, it is super hot, it is super difficult to get these bright colors on aluminum. And I'm really proud of this because it took us like six or seven tries to get this color pretty good. It's really, really hot color. Anyways, this is my favorite. I love this this color. This uh, There's the hot pink, there's the Ferrari red, there is the dark gray, which has been requested several times, finally made, and then we have the raw silver. And I made the raw silver because all the prototype motors that we typically make come in that raw silver, just because it's the most efficient way to just make motors and test them. And the manufacturer says that they're supposed to rust or tarnish or have issues, but I have not had any issues at all. And I've also messaged Quad Mover, Quad M-O-V-R, if you don't know who he is, you should definitely look him up. He's amazing. Uh, he also gets all of his motors made in just the raw, raw aluminum because it, it looks cool and it's just efficient. And so uh, he's never had any problems either. So I decided to make a small batch of the bells in this silver because it just looks awesome. And the reason why we are selling the stator separate from the bell is twofold. Firstly, to make a statement that you don't need to replace your entire motor. You can just buy the bell and pop it on and you're good to go. And while I'm on that topic, I will show you how to actually put the motor together because we've already gotten a couple questions on how to assemble the motor, which uh, perplexing to me, I'm sure to many of you guys as well, but here's how it goes. The motor comes with the screw on the bottom and you undo the screw, take the screw off, and then you take the stator base and you pop the, the shaft through the hole and you're done. Screw the screw at the bottom and that's it. It does come with a washer on the shaft, which you can see here magneted to the side of the motor. And this washer can either go on top of the top bearing or below the the bottom bearing here. It does not matter. It is just a spacer to take up slack. And you also have, we also have this new um, O-ring here, which is not really new, it's just a concept. It's something that RCM Power doesn't do that we've kind of urged them to do. We, we, we do a lot of things against manufacturer's recommendations because they just don't totally make sense. Uh, so this motor has a shaft that has been fitted to the bearing so that you can actually pull it out because our CN power motors as well as our previous motors have a habit of not being able to be disassembled. They say that this will result in quicker bearing failure. We have been doing this for over a year and a half now. We have not heard of any bearing failure. We have not had any on our, on our own quads or haven't heard of it for anybody. And we also prefer being able to just pull the bearings out and swap them out ourselves because having a serviceable motor with one screw is just just makes common sense. So this is why we've gone this route. We have that O-ring on there and that O-ring is primarily so that you can cinch down the, the screw on the, on the bottom and it's not gonna bind the motor. It's always gonna have the right pressure and it's always gonna spin freely. So there's that reason. The other reason why we sell the bells separately from the base is because by doing this, we don't need to stock a ton of different motor styles or types just for the different color. The base will always be this dark gray and then the other bells, the bells will change. You don't really see the base a whole lot. And so we can now offer a lot more different color, many more different colors without having an excessive amount of stock of motors. And that really helps us out a whole lot. Okay, so that's a 22.6 millimeter motor. It is not using the split shifted magnets and I'll explain why that is in a minute. So this motor is a 2809. It's got a 13 millimeter bearing. 
and it's got all the hot dude ads and whatnot. You can see the split shifted magnets on this, but the actual product that we ship does not have the split shifted magnets because it doesn't work everywhere how we want it to work. And I'll get to it in just a second. So this, this motor is really good. It's using the more recent magnets uh, that RCN Power has access to, and it performs really, really nicely. It's a uh, 1350, 1300 around there. It's designed for seven inch and six S but it'll do 8S just fine. It'll also do 8-inch and 6S just fine. Uh, it's, it's primarily geared to be a reasonably efficient, pretty high performance 7-inch 6S motor. And it is not the highest performance 7-inch 6S motor. I would recommend a bigger motor, but then you have more amp draw, less efficiency, other issues to deal with. So it's kind of like a balanced motor size. This is not an uncommon size. It's a common motor size for seven inch. Anyway, I'll finish talking about that. So the other motor is the 25 millimeter motor, which now comes in this dark gray color. We also have white bells. The um, yellow bells, the uh, neon yellow bells will likely come back in the next batch, but right now we have just this, this dark gray. We haven't started selling this with a split um, separate stator and bell because We've always sold it with the bell. So for now, we're going to do it that way. We may offer other colors. And so the very, the, there's been other changes to this, mo this motor, but the primary change is the split-shifted magnets. And this motor is the one that will s ship with the split-shifted magnets forevermore. And it has been shipping with the split-shifted magnets for over a year and a half. The last two batches of motors that we have had in all had the split-shifted magnets. And my goal with this was to put it out there, have people buy it, have people use it. A handful of people have noticed that the motor is different from the previous batch that they received. However, almost nobody has taken the motor apart and actually seen that the magnets are different. Uh, the goal was for me to make this video and explain the rationale why we went with this and have everybody already have it on their quad so they don't feel like they're left out or, or they need to like upgrade or anything. And this, is compa fully compatible with all the previous 25 millimeter motors, as in the bell can fit on all the previous 25 millimeter motors, except for the very, very, very first batch several years ago that was made by Brother Hobby. That one, it, the shaft length is just not perfectly aligned, but otherwise it will still fit. So the split shifted magnets, why did we do this? Why did we go with this? And so I'll, point, I'll direct you to the concept of a skewed stator and a skewed kind of flux field or basically what it's called is if you compare this I'm going to really dumb it down if you compare the split shifted magnets to just square magnets or rectangular magnets the difference here is that the split shifted has kind of a distributed field of magnetic flux 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 is is the path as the magnet passes from pole to pole on the stator it's more of a gradual pass. It is not like a hard notch as you can feel with something like the 16 millimeter motor or any small motor with strong magnets. It is very, very notchy. This notchy feeling, while a lot of us feel it and are like, oh yeah, that's a powerful motor, really doesn't mean a whole lot. And what you're feeling are the magnetic positions inside the motor as it rotates. And this is actually not a good thing. This results in electrical noise being fed back into the mo into the ESC from the, the movement of the bell. and uh, it's just generally unsmooth and that's not what we're looking for we're looking for something that spins more smoothly and not a um, loss of magnetic flux use because every notch here is a is a position in this bell that doesn't have magnetic flux that is being utilized appropriately so I, i'm really butchering this but i do my best to really dumb it down but if we could produce a skewed stator that would be ideal because that's how it's typically done on motors but that is very difficult to do on a motor this small and on an FPV motor. So instead we have split the magnets and shift them because also having a skewed magnet is very difficult to do and very expensive. Also, we have curved magnets on these motors so we can get the air gap even tighter. So having this split and shifted magnet mathematically in the, in the, uh, in the simulator says that it should have 99% of the same effect as a skewed stator or a skewed magnet. However, that is farthest thing from the truth in reality. And so what this is supposed to do is that it is not supposed to only smooth out the motor and just give it less overall noise feedback and less overall issues in operation. It's also supposed to give you higher average torque. 
And that means you lose a little bit of torque at the top end and you gain a bunch of torque in the mid range and low range. And overall, you gain maybe a little bit more efficiency depending on how the motor is used. In general, it's supposed to be an improvement. All those things completely untrue did not happen in the real world. This is this is just one example of why I, I don't really put a whole lot of emphasis on simulations and and various bench tests because they're not 100% representative of the real world. So when we did test this in the real world, there was a very real change, a very real improvement. It just wasn't what we were expecting. And so after all this time, finally, I'm getting to this. The improvement is that you genuinely feel like you have more throttle resolution. So my best guess as to why I think that the overall feel of the motor is smoother and why it feels like it has more resolution is because when you put this bell on the base itself and then you spin it by hand, it feels a lot smoother. Not only does it feel smoother, it feels like there are double the number of positions for the rotation of the bell. You know, when you spin the bell around, there's kind of these positions that the bell pops into. And so with this bell, with the split shifted magnets, it just feels like there are more positions. So my layman's way to explain why it feels like there's more resolution sort of is because there actually is more positions from where the bell sits. You feel like you have a finer feel of the throttle. And the best way I can explain this is the difference between a serrated knife and a scalpel or a smooth, super sharp knife. A serrated knife will kind of tear into bread or meat or whatever you try to cut, whereas a smooth, sharp knife will kind of glide into whatever you're trying to work with. And so this is what is felt in the air. It's not a huge feeling. A novice is probably not going to be able to tell the difference, but any pro, anyone that's very experienced, pro, I hate the word pro, but anyone that's very experienced is going to be able to notice that, oh, there is another layer of throttle control here that I haven't previously felt. And you know what? Some people may not feel it at all. Death Pilot actually has <laughs> the various versions of uh, all the motors with split magnets, not split magnets, everything. And he said outright, he just could not tell any difference. Uh, it's not something that is, is super duper obvious, but I mean it's hard for me to not tell. And specifically when I started testing the split magnet, split shifted magnet design on other motor styles. So the first thing that I tested it on was the 22.6 motor. And to my surprise, it was absolutely awful. Technically the split shifted design should work best on a tall magnet design. And that's because you have a lot more magnetic flux, a lot more interaction with the stator. And so having this softer transition from pole to pole should be beneficial <laughs> for a host of reasons. But that doesn't seem to be the case because what I felt with the 22.6 motor is that not only did I lose a whole ton of top end performance, I gained nothing at the bottom end. And so overall the motor just sucked. So Bell has done tests on this and he can't tell any difference. And I now have a little bit of concerns about Bell's ability to discern differences between motors in particular, because the difference between the split shifted magnet 22.6 and the square regular rectangular magnet 22.6 is, is not small. It's very, it's very drastic. And when I sent it to a couple other test pilots that I, I commonly work with, they were also able to clearly tell that, okay, no, this is, there's something wrong with this motor. It's not, it's not flying right. That's something's weird about it. So that's why we can't use it everywhere. Oh. Similarly, in the 2809, it does work. It does give you the, the resolution, the feel, all of it. But the difference is that once you get to this high, this bigger uh, motor size, you lose the top end of the throttle control a little bit and you don't gain any efficiency and it costs a whole lot more to make magnets like this. So there's just no benefit. So that's why we went with this regular rectangular magnets for the larger motor. It didn't make any sense. The reason why we kept it on the 25 millimeter is because you don't really lose a lot of top end. You, you lose like a couple percentage points off the top end th feel, but you gain this throttle resolution, which is what this motor already had to begin with. Having a super wide stator like this 
that's wider than expected, wider than what you would expect for a motor of this stature intended for a five inch prop, generally gives you what I am calling improved low end feel. Can't say torque, can't say any of that because I haven't really measured any of that. But to me, across t- tons of motors I've tested, this motor still has improved throttle feel in the mid to low range, which is what is, in my opinion, more important than anything else when you're flying smoothly and when you need to fly smoothly. And having the split shifted magnets is just another layer of extra smoothness on top of that. This motor is uh, 1870 kV, yeah, 1870 kV, and it cannot really operate well at higher kV, even though I personally prefer about 19 to 1920 kV it doesn't run well at above 18, really 1890 kV, but we knocked it down to 1870 to keep it consistent. The reason for that is a little bit unknown. However, we have tested it extensively with various other weird sizes. This is a 2803 motor and it does work. It does feel great on 4S, but it is also only 1800 kV and it only works on 4S and just barely. And uh, this is a kind of a much longer discussion, but there's some interaction with the with the magnetic flux and the way it the ESCs kind of read the position of the bell and how it's going on, which we believe is leading to the problems that we run into. But overall, just to make it super simple, this motor can't go faster than 18, 1870 kV safely without running into issues. Narrower motors don't have as much of a problem, and if we added an extra millimeter onto the motor, it wouldn't be a problem either. But then it would just weigh more, it would be totally unnecessarily large at that point. It's already to the level of unnecessarily large. And so the difference between the 22.6 millimeter and the 25 millimeter now, the main primary difference is that the 22.6 comes in 1920 kV. It's going to give you more power than the 25 millimeter motor only because it has higher kV. The 25 millimeter motor is smoother. Just, it's smoother. There's no question about it. It it just feels better in the low end throttle. It just feels smoother. The throttle control is easier. Everything about it is easier to fly. So if you're looking for something that is just super ultra smooth and you just want super smooth video performance and that's it, the 25 millimeter motor is your motor for sure. If you're and like throttle control and everything, if you're looking for a zippy, poppy, powerful, and kind of like general use, all encompassing everything motor, the 22.6 motor is your motor. And the other difference, which is my biggest surprise, is that this motor is unusually efficient. The 22.6 by 7.2 with the stator and the magnets and the, the way it's it, we put it together, I don't know why it's so efficient, but it is unusually efficient. And that's just a nice bonus. So those are the two primary motor classes for five inch and they're both distinctly different. And so now you kind of have to make a decision while you can do everything with both motors. One of them may be preferred for you. I like both of them. I can't decide which one I like best. So if I'm just flying super smooth for video and whatnot, I'll use the, the 22 point or the 25 millimeter motor, the quad with the 25 millimeter motor. If I'm flying generally for fun for myself, I'll use a 22.6 because this motor just rips. It's awesome. It's a fantastic motor. Other motors, we finally got the uh, 16 millimeter motor back in. This is the old version. The new version is a Unibel. It's great. It still has the M3 shaft with the collar, which we've had absolutely no issues with. It fits M5 or M5 mount props, no problem. It's it's great. And then we also have the uh, 13 millimeter motor still, What? but we only have the 6350 KV and the 1S, I don't know if we have the 1S KV left. Um, 1S is, um, is still interesting. Still working on it. It's a little bit... Um, another video is going to come out a little bit later about 1s it's uh it's it's great it's just it's been it's so sad that covid has really destroyed manufacturing of electronics and whatnot so it's just become more difficult anyways that's the whole new motor lineup hopefully this was interesting i think you should definitely floss your teeth now after all this talking take care bye-bye